I have a love-hate relationship with my cell phone. I love my cell phone's technology. My cell phone has superhuman senses. It can use light, sound, and radio in ways that are far beyond my capabilities. It has perfect memory, perfect pitch, perfect time. It can be trained to do many neat tricks. But I am not the master of my cell phone. I'm not even in the top three. My cell phone's first loyalty is to Google or Apple. Next is the cell company, the government, and then a multitude of app programmers. And then there's me. Most people believe that this feeling of powerlessness is normal to IT, but I don't feel this way about my desktop Linux systems. I can audit their communications. I can verify their state. I can have meaningful control over every aspect of their software and configuration. I have seen integrity, security, and audibility, and I can't find any of it in a modern cell phone. The best way to enjoy a cell phone is to never think about privacy or security. As long as I carry a cell phone, it creates a permanent record of my movements, my associations, my interests, and communications, and none of these records are under my control. My cell phone reduces most of my critical privacy and security issues down to a single act. I can either leave most of my privacy and security in the hands of Google, large corporations, the government, and unaccountable programmers. Or I can put my cell phone down and walk away. As an experiment, I tried to create a different option. The obvious answer is to turn the cell phone off. But that assurance is not always available. Everything about a cell phone is untrustable software. Today it may turn off. Tomorrow it might choose to play dead. The next day it might turn itself back on at somebody else's command. So I set out to see if I could isolate my phone on demand. This app displays the strength of various Wi-Fi signals over time. Modern cell phones have an astonishing resistance to isolation. They can sense and communicate via light, sound, and radio. They seem to actively fight being isolated. In theory, this metal box should block all RF. It has tight overlapping connections. I even sanded the touching surfaces to ensure good electrical contact. But in practice, some of the frequencies punch through. I had similar experiences with tinfoil and other metal containers. I asked an old experienced RF engineer why I did not get isolation and he just laughed. He said that all young engineers made the same mistake. He preferred thick containers of precision made cast aluminum for isolation. When I asked audio specialists about blocking sound, they also preferred thick layers of custom materials. If you really want to isolate a phone, you're going to need to use massive overkill. My current attempt to create ad hoc cell phone isolation utilizes multiple redundant layers in an attempt to compensate for the flaws in each layer. There are always flaws and you never have exactly what you need to block sound, light, and RF. The first layer. My phone starts to panic and drain its battery when it's isolated. So I begin by turning it off or engaging airplane mode. 
the second layer is I put a layer of soft cloth next to the phone. This begins dampening audio. It also protects the phone against inadvertent manipulation. All exercises in paranoia are required to utilize tinfoil. New heavy duty tinfoil works best. Layer four is another layer of sound dampening cloth. Audio is very hard to dampen across a wide range of frequencies, so it's best to use lots of overkill. Here I'm attempting to concentrate the cloth around the parts of the phone where the microphones and the speakers reside. Layer 5 is a watertight bag. This doesn't do much to dampen sound or RF, but there's no sense in being paranoid unless you're going to go all the way. Now, I'm also protected against immersion or heavy rain. But if you are paranoid, you'll need to replace the tinfoil and the plastic bag as they wear out. Layer 6 is a tight-fitting cookie tin. This is another layer of RF attenuation. I sanded the edges to ensure good electrical contact on all touching surfaces. Layers 7 and 8 are another layer of cloth and metal with a little foam thrown in. The outer layer of your isolation device should not look like trash or somebody might throw your cell phone away. This outer layer is a metal lunchbox. My isolation box works fairly well in most situations. Here is a graph of Wi-Fi signal strength that is, as it is used. You can see the signal, signal strength drop as each layer was added. You can also see the phone and the access point try to compensate for signal loss by cranking up or redirecting the power. Then you can see signal restored when the phone is removed from each layer of the box.